Hey guys, Jason with Longbottom Farm, and thanks for coming back. Today, we are gonna talk about a problem we're having here on the farm, and it's something that's not really in our control, but how we respond to it is. So, uh, what we're gonna talk about is the price of beef, or beef prices today. If you're a small family farm and you're raising meat to sell to other customers, meaning to process it and to package it, part of your business model, obviously, is you buy in cattle, or you're having cattle on your farm, uh, you're breeding and you raise those out to between two and three years and then you take them to a processor and you process them uh, Probably I don't know four or five years ago. We started this about seven years ago and we're, we've got 55 acres So it's fairly small for a cattle operation and it's not really big enough to, to breed if we wanted to breed You know say we're processing 20 a year, which is what we're doing about right now. We would need 20 cows or heifers uh, we would need one bull, so there we're at 21. And then those 20 would have babies. So the first year we've got 20 cows, 20 yearlings, and then still a bull, so we're already up to 40. The second year they would have another 20, hopefully. And that puts us up to about 60, and we haven't even sold anything yet. <laughs> and honestly, on 55 acres, uh, we've got about 40 acres 45 acres in pasture it's just really not enough to run 60 head of cattle um so and that would be a continuous cycle then you would you know have another 20 babies and the very first ones were born would be that two to three year range and then you could process them and so what we do is we buy in yearling cattle or you know if we find somebody just getting rid of a herd for a really good deal you know we've jumped on those before even if they're a little older um you know if they fill out great we'll process them if they don't uh they make great hamburger because you're using all the cuts rather than just trimmings uh so it's some premium ground beef but that's typically our model right now is we buy in yearlings and we raise them out between a year and a half, two years, and then take them to the processor. That process has usually, you know, been around somewhere dollar twenty-five to a dollar fifty-ish per pound, and we can make that work with the numbers and the pricing that we were at. And as of last year, prices they're getting up to two twenty-five, two fifty, and according to the USDA this year, they keep track of the number of head of cattle in the country. According to them, we're at the lowest we've ever been. And they started recording this in 1972. So 50 some years, the lowest number that, that we've had for cattle in the US. And what that means is less cattle obviously going into production. And there's also a demand for beef. And of course, you know, when supply is low and demand's high, prices go up to meet that demand. You know, unfortunately, that's what's happening with us. The main thing I wanted to talk about here is not really cattle prices, but also as a small farm, there are times you have to raise your prices. You know, if you're not making money to not only cover your costs, but you have to make a living as well, then you're not sustainable. And if you're not sustainable, then you're not paying the bills. You can't cover the costs that you need to run your operation. And before you know it, you're out of business. So raising prices is just one of those necessary evils. We recently, we went up last year on our prices based on the higher cost, but we tried to go up a, a nice little jump on our premium products like steaks and, you know, some of the, some of the higher end cuts, but we left our ground beef, a lot of our roast and stuff. We left those the same, you know, cause it's everybody out there is facing inflation. Everybody, you know, our customers, just like us, they're working people, they're facing inflation and higher costs for everything. And the last thing we want to do is be part of that. Um, but at the same time, we've got to cover our cost in order to keep operating. And so that's why we try to keep the staple stuff low. But this year with cattle prices likely to jump again, that means we're going to have to raise the price on those staple items as well. And it's just something that we have to do again to, to be sustainable. And if you're selling products, whether that be vegetables or beef, you know, it could be anything. You know, if, if lack of supply or lack of the items that you need to make your operation run, just naturally those things are going to get more expensive to acquire because more people want them. That takes the price up. Now, as far as cattle, you know, we import a lot of beef as well. That beef can be bought for cheap and, you know, it's something we that commercial beef already do. So we'll likely see a lot more of that in markets. But, you know, our, our goal when we started this farm was just to raise food for ourselves because the stuff that is being imported and processed here, it's, you know, I'm sure you guys have read about pink slime and or finely textured meat, meat being cleaned with chemicals such as ammonia hydroxide. And there's just so many things that we decided we didn't want that. We raise our beef here. We know at the processor how they're processing it. Um, and we know that it's just safe. It doesn't have chemicals. It doesn't have fillers. And it's just 
beef, which you'd expect to buy. Fortunately, these days, it's hard to get that from a local supermarket or a store. Even with labels of grass-fed and organic and all this, there's so many loopholes and ways around that stuff. I'm gonna actually do a video on that soon about all the, the labels and what they actually mean and, and what they don't mean. So anyways, we started for ourselves and then we started raising out for other people. Uh, started out with a few friends that wanted stuff and then we decided, you know, this could be a cool business. We'll you know, we get to work in. on the farm, raise food for ourselves and make a living at it. So we ramped up over the last six years or so and we're to the point now where the farm is sustainable. But again, beef prices this year are just, they're a little concerning. And it's great for our friends that are selling, you know, cattle into the sale barn and into the commercial market those guys work their ass off and you know it's there's been years where they're really getting screwed as far as prices being too low you know for somebody like me that's buying cattle to process obviously that helps our bottom line but again if they're not sustainable and not making the money then i don't have cattle to buy from them because they're getting out of it so prices needed to rise somewhat so i'm glad to see those guys are getting their due but again, it's just one of those things with business, things are always changing, nothing static, and you have to figure out these challenges that pop up, how are you gonna deal with them? So for us, again, that's just raising prices. One thing we did, or we do typically when we raise any prices, you know, if you're selling meat to your customers, is don't do it right away. Put out an email, put out messages to your customers saying, hey, this is coming. We typically do at least 30 days. And we'll put out a 30 day notice that, hey, we're raising prices in 30 days because of this or that, this is why. And that gives them time to, at least if they wanna buy some stuff, they can stock up on stuff. Again, you know, we're still probably losing a little money that way, but they've supported us. And the last thing we wanna do is blindside them with, with price increases. So we give them a 30 day, and then we typically try to look at why we're raising prices, how much we need to raise what we're currently doing to be sustainable come up with a percentage and then we usually try to convey to the customer that hey we're capping any price increase at this percentage and that just sort of gives them idea rather than just say hey we're raising prices in 30 days this gives them more of an idea of what to expect um, again so they're not being blindsided you know I hate raising prices in the first place but it's just one of those things that any business but you know farming for us uh, that you have to do to stay sustainable you know, something good that comes out of this, and I don't want to say good, but a lot of times some of your best ideas come from need. Like you need to make a change in order to make something happen. And when this stuff like this happens and our, our cattle aren't as profitable as we need them to be to keep doing it, we also start looking at our other enterprises and saying, hey, how can we either make these other enterprises more sufficient or do something different with them to help, help offset what we're doing with our cattle, uh, you know, until things correct in that enterprise. And things like that could be like chickens. We have layers, how many eggs we're producing. Um, we sell a lot of eggs. And this time of year, it's a little slow, obviously, because we don't have farmer's market. But eggs are a pretty good source of income for us. Downside is they're probably the most labor of us because you have to move the chickens, the house. You know, we're all pasture, so they have to be on pasture. And for, uh, that means new pasture. That doesn't mean a, a, a dirt surface, you know, grass, vegetation. And so moving netting, moving the chicken house. With chickens, obviously, you get eggs. And the more... You, Eggs you sell the better, but that's also the more eggs you have to wash. And any kind of commercial equipment to wash eggs, you're talking thousands of dollars. And for us, that's just not feasible. So it just adds a lot of labor. Chicken layer chickens are probably our most intensive thing on the farm uh, as far as labor. But um, we, we get a decent price for the eggs and uh, we get non-GMO feed, which you get a good cost on. We started buying that and half ton totes. That saved us money on the bags. So there's just a lot of ways we can make that enterprise work. There's also broilers. We've been taking our broilers to a USDA processor, which is super expensive, but it allows us really to sell the chicken anywhere. I have the equipment now, and we're gonna set that up this year and do some processing here on farm. We've done it a number of years ago, and just with fence building and all the projects we had starting our farm, it was just too much labor on that end to, to do that. So we're kind of in a, we still got a lot to do, but uh, we're in a place where we can do that and save money in that enterprise to offset some of the, the cattle prices. Uh, and then with our pigs, our pigs, we feel like we're pretty efficient. Um, they just have a wooded area that's locked off. We don't move them. Uh, we give that area about a five to six month rest every year. But other than that, they have large feeders that we fill once a week, you know, depending on how many pigs we have and what the demand is. We can set the water on auto. Coming up with those things are pretty efficient. Did a video uh, up here. You can see right here on how we raise our pigs. And we'll have another video coming out this year because we change every year. We do something different or just try to further make efficient what we're already doing. 
So that's all to say is just that if you're if you're facing an issue with an enterprise on your farm that's not profitable or because of some like right now prices being high makes it hard to be profitable you can always look at your other enterprises to see what you can do to help the other thing is sometimes you just have to say this enterprise ain't worth it i think seven sons farm coined a, a term diversification rather than diversification and sometimes that's true that we diversification we make things worse by adding enterprises onto our farm that just aren't necessarily profitable and they take away time or land or space for the enterprises that are profitable you know that's something you have to have a hard look at as well beef for us has always been one of our highest sources of income on the farm it's also one of our lowest labor points on the farm you know we move the cattle but we can set up paddocks for days uh, all the water is automated and we don't have to feed them they eat grass so i mean we're doing some hay in the winter but the ruminants are just a really it's something we really want to have on the property just because they're so beneficial one to the soil and the land but two it just goes in hand with how we wanted to farm which was in a regenerative matter and you know making the soil better and we don't have to buy outside feed for the cattle other than some minerals and we do get some alfalfa pellets that we use rather than grain bucket we use an alfalfa pellet bucket uh, that way we can stay in line with grass fed and make sure that they're not getting any grain to follow that so that's it in a nutshell just wanted to talk about the high prices of beef what that means for our farm what that could mean for your farm and some of the ways that you can deal with it if it's a problem that you're facing again hopefully if you're raising cattle for the commercial market this is well deserved so you know thumbs up to you and we want people that raise beef for the commercial market to thrive because again we buy yearlings and that's how we get our cattle again they don't go to the commercial but uh it's the same process so other than that if you have questions comments leave them below uh we'd love to hear from you and now we're gonna get to doing some fencing and we'll catch you in the next one all right bye